The SafeTran ATC cabinet represents the next generation of ITS traffic signal cabinet. Based on the most popular features of Caltrans, NEMA, and ITS traffic signal cabinets, the SafeTran ATC cabinet represents the next generation ITS traffic signal cabinet. As an intelligent cabinet, the ATC uses high-speed serial communications between the cabinet assemblies via Serial Interface Units, or SIUs, providing modern features, advanced diagnostics, enhanced safety, simplified cabinet wiring, and reduced cabinet size. The ATC cabinet supports both 110-volt AC and 48-volt DC signal heads, while high-density load switches and quad detector modules allow up to 32 signal outputs and 120 detection inputs. The ATC cabinet provides both voltage and current monitoring of all signal outputs, even low-power LEDs. The innovative SafeTran power assembly accepts 120 volts AC and a variety of alternative power sources, providing smarter, safer, and greener intersection operations. Here's the power assembly. Notice the flasher is located in the power assembly. By locating the flasher in the power assembly, most of the other sub-assemblies in the cabinet can be removed from the cabinet while maintaining the intersection in a safe flash mode. For example, you can remove the input assembly, output assembly, controller, and auxiliary display unit, or ADU, from the cabinet, and it will stay in flash. This keeps the intersection in a safe state during maintenance or equipment replacement. The red circuit breaker switches are used to switch and protect various power subsystems within the assembly, such as the clean power switch that controls the two clean power outlets on the left side of the front panel and three outlets on the back panel. There is a high power 48 volt DC switch that controls the high power supply if installed. Switches are also provided to control the optional solar panel inputs and battery stack. The power assembly can be ordered in several different configurations. It can be ordered as an AC only unit that drives standard 120 volt AC LED signals and no battery backup. It can also be ordered as an AC or DC only unit that powers 48 volt DC signals with or without battery backup. An optional MPPT charge controller or solar battery charging system is available and designed to accept power inputs from either solar panels or a high power 48 volt DC power supply and charge a stack of batteries creating a 36 volt uninterruptible power supply. The battery stack voltage is boosted to create the 48 volts DC used to power the 48 volt DC signals and cabinet components. The 36 volt DC battery stack was chosen so that maximum voltages in the cabinet remain below the safety extra low voltage level of 50 volts DC during all battery charging conditions. The system can also be used in hybrid mode with 120 volt utility power that charges the batteries. The battery backup system is capable of working in applications that use all DC operated components, enabling the possibility of full off-grid operation deployment. The power assembly is designed to work in conjunction with an ATC type controller. It talks to the controller through the synchronous data link control or SDLC communications ports on the back. All status and commands are sent through the SDLC port to the power assembly with status displayed on the front panel of the controller. ATC type controllers include the Econolite Cobalt rack mount, Econolite 2070 with an Econolite 2070 1C module installed, or even third-party 2070 controllers with the proper software installed. The ATC cabinet includes a built-in fan lamp assembly at the top of the cabinet that communicates serially to the power assembly. The assembly includes a temperature sensor, four-door switch inputs, and fan and LED lighting circuits. A microcontroller in the power assembly reads the temperature sensor and determines when to activate the fans. It also monitors the current draw of the fans to help determine if the cabinet filter needs to be replaced or if the fans need servicing. The microcontroller can also adjust the cabinet lighting depending on the time of day. The fan lamp assembly can drive up to four LED lighting modules. All status is communicated back to the controller and can be relayed to the maintenance office. The clean power outlets include additional noise filtering beyond what the service panel supplies for voltage sensitive electronic equipment. They are also positioned with enough spacing to accommodate large power adapter type plugs. The outlets can be controlled by the clean power switch on the front panel from the equipment off technician switch 
or by microprocessor command to enable load shedding during extended power outages to help extend battery life when the MPPT charge controller is installed. The power path of the power assembly is calculated to be the most efficient available. Moving to the back panel of the power assembly, you can see here the different ports and connectors. The ATC cabinet power assembly includes a NEMA port 1 SDLC hub, providing the ability to install up to three NEMA TS2 compliant detection devices such as Autoscope. Devices on the SDLC hub communicate with the controller over the ATC serial bus 2 port. There are 16 general purpose NEMA compliant 24 volt DC input output ports that can be mapped to any of the controller's parallel inputs or outputs. As a result, special functionality can be added to the cabinet beyond what is provided by the input and output assemblies. Here are the three switched clean power outlets that were mentioned earlier. On the left side of the back panel is the Serial Bus 3 interface, which allows the CMU that's located in the output assembly to talk with the flasher. The Serial Bus 1 and 2 in through connectors on each assembly enable the assemblies in the cabinet to be daisy chained together without the need for a separate communications assembly. Here is the fan lamp assembly connector, providing power and serial communications to that assembly. One of the unique features of the power assembly is this assembly power 15 pin Molex MLX connector array. This was designed to provide a standardized single connector to power any of the assemblies in the cabinet. The connectors provide 120 volts AC, 48 volts DC, 24 volts DC, line sync, and various other control circuits. This is the flasher output connector that routes to the output termination assembly. Each flasher output circuit includes an internal self-resetting PTC type fuse. The ATC cabinet is based on the ITS cabinet version 1 standard that defined the SDLC frame messages to accommodate 120 detector inputs. As a result, the ATC cabinet can support 120 channels by using a combination of 24 channel and 48 channel detector racks. The 48 channel detector rack has two SIUs. Each SIU provides four optically isolated inputs routed to the CDC connectors on the rear for a total of eight opto inputs for use as PED button inputs. The 24 channel detector rack has one SIU providing four opto inputs. Traditional isolator modules can also be installed in detector slots for PED inputs. The input assembly can accept standard detector cards. On a 24 channel rack, any standard two channel module can be installed. However, on the 48 channel assembly, half width quad detectors must be used if you want to use all 48 channels. As usual, an Opticom preemptor module can be installed in the right hand slot. The detector cards are hot swappable just like any legacy detector, although with all electronic equipment, it is best to swap out the cards without power applied. The input assembly features a 3 8 inch wide lip along the front bottom edge of the assembly where user defined labeling can be applied. Looking at the back panel of the 48 channel input assembly, you can see there are four input connectors that route down to the detector termination panels. These are the CDC connectors that were mentioned earlier that provide the four opto isolated inputs for connecting the pedestrian inputs. There are two 24 channel test inputs. Each has an associated D sub connector. The pins are in parallel with the detector module outputs, enabling connection of detector test panels or other instrumentation. Over on the far lower right here is the power input harness with the universal connector. On the far left of the panel here are the serial bus in out connectors, which as mentioned earlier, permits daisy chain communication connections among the various assemblies. The ATC cabinet supports up to 32 output channels. The new design replaces the standard large single channel load switches with new dual channel high density switch packs or HDSPs. 
Each SafeTran output assembly houses up to eight HDSPs, providing 16 output channels in a 3-unit or 3U rack space. The user can install up to two output assemblies in the ATC cabinet. The HDSPs are available in both 48 volt and 120 volt versions. These switches happen to be the 2202 LV model for low voltage 48 volt DC signals, but there is a 2202 HV model for high voltage 120 volt signal application. While the HDSPs are hot swappable, as demonstrated here, powering down before replacing any electronic equipment is what we recommend. The cabinet monitor unit, or CMU, is located on the right side of the output assembly. It uses a data key rather than a traditional CMU-MMU programming card. The data key is programmed with a PC program and a data key programming box. Depending on cabinet configuration, removing the data key like this causes a flash condition. Once the data key is programmed, the data key is then simply reinstalled and the reset button pushed to put the cabinet back into operation. Located on the front left side of the output assembly are the technician switches, as opposed to a NEMA cabinet where they are located on the back side of the police panel. The switches include the auto flash, stop time, signals on off, and equipment on off. It also has this 24 volt DC test switch. This allows you to turn on the output indicators on the HDSPs momentarily to visually observe the state of the intersection when it went into flash. Additionally, the main contactor is located within the output assembly, directly behind the technician switches. Here on the rear panel of the output assembly, going from left to right, are the serial bus in through connectors for cabinet communications. Below that is the cabinet connector, which is used for hooking up the police panel and other switches. Here is a spare output connector for the SIU that includes six extra 24 volt DC input output ports. This spare output connector includes 24 volts DC and ground. Across here are the eight output termination assembly interface connectors. Each connector contains two channels of both the output signals and the field wire sense signals from the output termination assembly for monitoring by the CMU. Finally, on the right hand side is the power connector. The auxiliary display unit or ADU is optional but a very useful diagnostic tool. As you can see, the CMU for the ATC cabinet is quite a bit smaller than CMU or MMUs used in other NEMA or 332 cabinet types. Because of the smaller size of the CMU, the ADU was developed to provide the full set of intersection display indicators and includes additional diagnostic capabilities. For example, if a load switch goes bad or is removed, the ADU will immediately display which load switch is not functioning with these blue lights. The screen also shows the voltage and current levels of each output. Here is the output termination assembly. At the top are the new high density flash transfer relays. Each relay includes an LED to indicate when it is active. The LED is activated through a third relay contact so that it will not light unless the relay has actually closed. Below the flash transfer relays are the new miniature flash program blocks. Below the program blocks are the pluggable Euro style field wire terminal blocks. Along the bottom are the ground or neutral terminal blocks, configurable for 48 volt or 120 volt operation. Also included are these 48 volt DC and 120 volt source outputs that enable the field technician to apply power to the signal heads and confirm proper operation before the load switches are installed. Each output termination panel supports 16 channels. For a 32 channel cabinet, two output termination panels will need to be installed. Since this is a rack mounted configuration, the output termination panel can be mounted facing the front or the rear of the rack at any position on the rack. It can also be mounted with different depth and angle positions to accommodate variations in field wire entry points. Additionally, with sufficient service loop length, the panel face can be tilted forward from the top down to 90 degrees for full access to the rear of the assembly.
Each output line is protected by a three-stage protection circuit based on a resettable PTC fuse, MOV, and gas discharge tube. The PTC and MOV provide high voltage transient protection. The PTC fuse protects the circuitry in the event of a shorted output. The gas discharge tube and MOV are mounted on these replaceable cards. Since the MOVs and gas discharge tubes are mounted on the cards, they can be optional if the installation is in a location that does not experience frequent lightning strikes. PTC resettable fuse protection is built in. A transparent cover is supplied for the rear panel. This makes it easy for a technician to quickly check and confirm if any of the transient protectors or fuses are burnt out without having to remove the cover. The wiring harnesses from the output assembly terminate at these eight connectors. Above these is the flash input connector. This harness routes to the flasher output connector on the power assembly. The connector here at the upper right is the cabinet power input. As you can see, everything is terminated via insulated connectors. When the transparent panel is installed, there is virtually complete protection from shock hazards. The ATC cabinet is designed to work with the Cobalt Rack Mount Controller or a 2070 controller with an Econolite 2071C module installed or any other ATC compliant controller with the appropriate software installed. The service panel is where both the utility and backup AC power is attached to the cabinet. There are two terminal blocks located under this panel, one for utility power input and the other for attaching a generator or conventional uninterruptible power system or UPS. The service panel also includes this changeover relay that automatically switches to the generator or other backup AC source when that backup source is active. For overcurrent protection, the panel includes a main breaker and a GFI breaker located here. A 10 amp breaker is used for the main circuit and a 15 amp breaker is used for the GFI outlet. The panel includes guards to protect from inadvertently touching and tripping the breakers. The service panel uses a TEAS compliant plug-in 40,000 volt transient suppressor module that includes EMI RFI filtering. The entire assembly is enclosed to prevent contact with hazardous voltages while working on the cabinet. The service panel includes a GFI duplex outlet for power tools and equipment. There is also a single outlet located after the suppressor filter, which provides clean power to attach a power strip to power more sensitive electronic equipment. Since the service panel assembly is rack mounted, it can be located anywhere on the rack for convenience. Typically, it will be located on the right side of the rack, either front or back. The SafeTran ATC cabinet is the next generation smarter, smaller, and more efficient traffic cabinet from Econolite. As an intelligent power alternative cabinet, the ATC cabinet enables the design of smarter, safer, and greener intersections. The SafeTran ATC traffic signal cabinet. 